G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, hi folks. Well, we're back in Canberra again, fantastic Australian capital city. And uh, we're going to have a very special day today with uh, one of Canberra's great personalities and celebrities. <laughs> this guy is sort of pretty well known right, right across the, uh, the city. An amazing guy, Mr. Frank Arnold. <laughs> Thank you so Good much. Good to see you, Thanks Graham. so Graham. much for great. being Thanks with for us. Thanks for coming. Now, all of the people in Canberra actually call you Francois, is that correct? Uh, yeah, most The world-famous Francois, but he's a very, very well-known celebrity <laughs> in Canberra, an amazing man. Originally, uh, you had a, a very successful architectural firm. Oh, uh, design uh, and studio. Design, design studio. Yep. And uh, that was sort of pretty well where you, you started off, but you had a great love of art when you were young. Now, your, both of your great-grandmothers yes had a pretty dominant influence on you um quantum institute quantum ideas bureau quantum ideas bureau yeah. which was originally your uh, your design company yeah but you had a background in architecture yes but it always loved art but tell me how this all started as far as the architecture was concerned ever since i was 12 years old i was just fascinated by architecture i was given plastic building blocks you know pre-lego yeah. um and i just I just loved it, so I pursued that at uh, Tilopia Park High School in yep. technical drawing. Yep. I was really very good at it. By the time I was 15, um, my tech drawing teacher, mm -hmm. a wonderful by name by the guy, name of uh, Jeff Sutherland, yep. um, got me a gig at uh, A.V. Jennings Homes. Oh, right, okay during the Christmas uh, holiday period. I even designed one or two houses while I was there because I had some ideas. Yeah. And it just stuck, it just became a passion. I mean, I was passionate about golf and I was going to be a golf professional, but then I couldn't, I couldn't drop architecture. Yeah. And I thought, well, I'll keep them both going at the same time. But when you're immersed in architecture, yeah. you don't have time to go play golf. Yeah, and it was very, it kept you very busy. But out of that came the, the passion for your art as well. Yes. And you, you love to paint clowns. Uh, well, that's what it's evolved into. Yeah. Uh, you put some colour in your life. Well, <laughs> totally. my mum bought me a set of oil paints. Yeah when I was, oh God, I wouldn't have been 10 or 11. And I used every paint in that set on one painting. It's the most garish <laughs> the thing. I'm bugging if I know where it is, but mum's yeah. probably still got it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just painting, painting, painting. I, you know, even I was told it at preschool that I actually got dragged back to preschool by mum yeah. uh, when I got home and she found that my pockets were full of all the chalks from the teacher's blackboard because <laughs> I decided, oh, I could use those. So I've, I was a thief at a very early age. <laughs> but I mean, the whole, the whole aspect of the clown is that there's, uh, there's this sort of mask in a sense of who these people are and you found fascination in going to see them put their makeup on, going to the circuses, yep. seeing them outside the situation where nobody really knew who they were. So we're going to be doing two pieces today with you. Yep. Uh, you're going to be doing a portrait and then you've sort of made up this this little marquette, I suppose you could say it is. Yeah. It's... Just a design that you actually want to want to work with. Yeah. Um, and then from there, which I really find fascination of, is, is your clown series. And you're going to do some work on one of those pieces for us as well. Yeah, yeah. So what I'll do is I'll step out a shot and then come and sit down. I'm going to blast you a whole bunch of questions. Really, I mean, this, this man's hilarious. He's got such an interesting background. But some of the stuff he's done in Canberra, I said, no wonder he's a bit of an icon around here because <laughs> you wouldn't normally get to pull this stuff off unless people really knew who you were. But I'll get out a shot. I'm going to let Frank take over. It's going to be an interesting day, absolutely. Now, one of your influences as well is you've got a few, but you really love the work of uh, Francis Neely. Francois Neely. Francois Neely. Or Francoise 
technically, because she's a she. She's a she. Francoise Neely. But fascinating work, and you're going to be doing something similar today as far as the blocking and the bright colours are concerned in conjunction with the little marquette that you put together. Mm. So where, where, do we, where do we start? I like to work wet on wet, because mm -hmm. it's sort of when I have the most fun. And yeah, so I just, I'm just hooking. But we're gonna do two, we'll, we'll, we'll do this one as well, because I just love your clown pieces and you're gonna go over one of the clown pieces with yeah, us as well. I love, I love the clowns, because you know, when you think about, um, when you think about clowning, you know, there's all sorts of weird theories about them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and there's, you know, people think of Stephen King's It and they, you know, there's a phobia where people have a phobia of clowns. Yeah. Um, but really there's an amazing symbology in them. Um, and. You know, it's it's a religious and spiritual symbology. You know, the the ruffle around the neck, mm -hmm. um, which, rep which which represents which represents this, the this serpent from the Garden of Eden. There you go. And you know, there's the crosses. And unbeknownst to probably the majority of people in the world, is that there's actually a clown registry. Yes, I um, I was researching clown symbology, you know. I kept seeing this, I, this thing of a registry coming up, so I, I researched it and yes, I, there are no two clowns the same. They're like snowflakes. They're like snowflakes. And so if a clown wants to become a clown or a person wants to become a clown, they have to register their, the design of their face. And the way they do that is on a boiled egg and they paint the, right? They paint the, the what they want to, their thing to look like, and s some people go to amazing lengths. They'll they'll do the the collar rough. They'll even do a little um, semi uniform, you know, like with the harlequin diamonds or whatever. And they send them to the registry, and then there's some poor bugger in the registry. He's got to wander around the registry with that egg going, uh, well, it's a bit like that one, but no, it's different. It's bit, there's, there's thousands of these eggs. If you go to the registry of clown faces, yeah. um, there's like the walls and walls and walls of boiled eggs <laughs> with funny. faces painted on them and wearing funny little hats and whatever. So I'm going to throw some blue in. Yep. Because... Uh, I'm guessing that this um, this face probably would be a brunette. Uh, you know, when I was studying with um, Trish Holliday, she would she'd go, go through my set of paints and she'd throw out all the black. Yep. You, know, you don't need blacks. Um, you need darks. And so she taught us how to blend you know, three colours to create a dark. Um, it might be a, a red and a blue and something else that you just whacked in and it gave the blacks a lot of life. Mm. Um, and I, I loved that. I found that really exciting. And Trish was one of your early influences and teachers? Uh, yeah, she was a great art teacher at the School of Art. Just an amazing colour theorist. I think it's time for a duller blue in here. So a lot of your paintings, uh, particularly these types of ones, are very instinctual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just about the joy of the journey. That's it is. It. Sometimes it's just great. Just um, slopping on a bucket load of oil paint. Some of the other pieces that you do as well, uh, you're really into uh, tribal um, idols as well. And you've got a piece we're just putting up now called Hero Idol. So yeah. I, think, I think the geometry in these things is great. You can actually see your architecture background coming through on those pieces. Yeah. yeah. I got really fascinated with um, the tribal masks mm -hmm. and the totems and I've always been fascinated, as I've said, with clowns. Every culture has had ways of 
uh, dressing themselves up so they can be something else. So a clown a person dresses themselves up as a clown so they can be a clown. Yeah. A tribal elder will don a mask so that they can celebrate a ceremony or ward off evil spirits or whatever. Um, and even, you know, the wonderful com com comedy del arte yeah. uh, in, throughout Italy. I mean, you know, the big punchinella noses and the crazy masks and the weird eyes and... Right. Okay, I've just grabbed an oil stick. These things are great. I'm going to throw in some green here because I tried that in the watercolour mm -hmm. and it looked pretty good. And I figured that what I could do with the green, so I can, it, it's blending with the, the flesh tint here quite nicely. And when you go a bit light, it blends okay. So I've got two greens and I'm going to just put um, some under, under the eyes, but I'll probably darken that up with the yellow. And then this is gonna get to be a bit of a melange of color. I think it's just really cool. The only problem with the oil stick is that, you know, with the stretched canvases, um, if your oil stick's a little bit dry and tough, it, um, <coughs> it sort of keeps hitting the middle bit and you get some dark ridges. Well, yeah, I don't mind that. It's sort of a, it's a happy accident as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to risk some... <laughs> Weird stuff. Do it and Do it, see man. what um, see what happens as I use that bit there to blend and lighten that. And actually, I quite like that. Um, it's sort of coming in right now. I'm just putting some more colour on my palette with the colours that I want to use. Grab a few brushes so that I can alternate alternate between them. Okay, so I'm I'm still wanting to get dark in here and I'm wanting to blitz this shadow bit and then I there's going to be a shadow down there that's going to go into that light blue now you know do we want our brunette to be blue eyed or hazel uh, I don't know I'm going to start with the blue uh -huh. now as part of your life you've done extensive traveling around the world as well <laughs> and always um, getting into some quite strange and amazing situations huh. and there was one time you were telling me that you were, were uh, uh, mistakenly recognised when you're in France, I think you're on the Champs-Élysées, <laughs> and yes. a, a restaurateur and manager looked at you and said, Mr Iggy Pop, so um. come in and there, there, there you were. So your mate just sort of took it on from there and said, yes, I'm his manager and all of a sudden you're in this five, five star restaurant as, as Iggy Pop. Uh. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, <laughs> Rob went up to try and get a table, and they looked at Rob and thought, oh, no, we cannot fit you in, we are fully booked. And um, so I wandered up and I said, uh, Rob, Rob, is there a problem? And they looked at me and they thought I was Iggy Pop. <laughs> so they moved people <laughs> from their tables and they set up a table for us. And the waiter came up and said, excuse me, but we have many guests who are wondering, uh, are you famous rock star? And I was gonna say, yeah, no mate, I'm Francois, but Rob said, oh look, I'm terribly sorry, um, but he's having two weeks rest. So he is incognito. Mr. Ah, <laughs> of course. So, it spread throughout the restaurant that um, Iggy Pop was in the restaurant <laughs> and we got free entry down into um, their nightclub and it was an enjoyable night do. to say the least. It was an amazing night. Well you were saying before that uh, one of your great influences apart from a few is, is, is Picasso and right now with the way that you're painting it's very similar to the way that Picasso approached his work. It looks very striking. I can see Chagall creeping in there as well. Yeah, well, I love the Chagall stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I love to think that you can follow in footsteps and learn. And, and yes, I do preparation drawings. I do my little scribbles. But you've got a couple of different ways that you approach your work. Now, I'm just going to bring up 
three pieces that are very different. One of the, your influences as well is uh, Reg Mombasa. Yeah. And if you look at these paintings, and they're very graphic, this is probably coming from your design background. Yep. It's Skeletal Man 1, yep. and then Skeletal Man 2, yep. and Skeletal Man 3. Uh, and you can see that they're very, very graphic pieces, very sharp line. Um, they look fantastic, but they're, they're really, really good paintings. Now, Leonard French, a uh, great Australian artist who just passed away last year, last January, yep. uh, was a, a big influence on you as well. I can see why, because I love his work too. Mm. But uh, you went to one of his exhibitions called Genesis, is that correct? Yeah. The whole space was dark and you walked up to these different alcoves and there at the back of the alcove was you know, a stunning painting. Hours, I think I went and saw that exhibition about ten times. It had a massive effect on me. It was just incredible. Okay, Frank, well we might let you finish this one off. And the second love of your life, and the one that fascinates me, is your, uh, is your clown pieces. And uh, I think you're going to be doing some work on one of those. So let's move on to that one. Yeah, cool. Okay. Okay, Francois, we've gone on to the next one, and I actually love your clown pieces. Thank you. Uh, so what are we going to do with this guy? Um, well, as you know, it's one that I have already been working on, but it needs to be um, pushed a little bit. It needs some finer detail. So I'm going to just do a little bit of work up there on the eyes. You know, I've got my little maquette there, but I think there needs to be some sculpting of the eyes so they sort of become a bit of a symbol. Uh-huh. So, yeah, as you were saying, you've got the small marquette that you've done. I think that you did that in pencil. It's really cool, that, too. I yeah, really, really look, like I, I, I love to do a little study to start with. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, you, you alluded to, you know, Picasso mm -hmm. uh, earlier, and, you know, he did, I don't know, 20, 30 drawings before launching into Guernica. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I love to do the little markets and I've always either done a, a quick scribble before I've hooked into a painting. Sometimes the little scribble becomes also a, a little work of art. But one of the things that you do enjoy, and you have a, a book that you take with you, basically you're drawing wherever you're going. You're drawing buildings, you're drawing people. Yep. Um, I mean, you being uh, an architect as well, you're obviously drawing a lot of the, the buildings and the forms that you see, the various plinths and the columns, and whether it be Roman or Greek, because you travel so much as well. Or, or haunted Vasa and... Yeah. Um, it's, it's saying in, in that, in that travelling aspect, you actually met Christo. Yeah. The famous Christo in, <laughs> in Greece. Yep. A few years back. In, uh, in Rome. In Rome, was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, for those who don't know who Christo is, can you illuminate us? Um, Christo is the guy that, well, he's an installation artist, artist, basically. Back in 1968, 67, he wrapped um, Sydney Heads, I think it was Little Bay, mm -hmm. um, in white plastic. That just um, stayed with me forever as, uh, you know, the audacity to take on a project like that. And then... I guess it was the architect in me or the project manager or whatever, thinking, you know, God, what does this guy have to go through? You know, it was, that was before you could Google. Mm. You know, it was, what does he have to go to, through? And then you realise, you know, most more recently, now that you can Google him, you realise that it, it's a massive undertaking. Mm, and he gets the fabric specially made. You know, the man is extraordinary. Then I got an invite to go and see his latest project, which was on Lake Ilya. What a fantastic experience to meet such an amazingly creative human being. Oh. Really did change the world of installation art. You sort of tend to do these sequences of clowns and it'll be clown symbols, busted one, 
Yeah. Yeah. Symbols busted too. I'm a triptych person. Yeah, there you go. I can't help it. I love doing triptychs. Now there's another one I really like. It actually reminds me a little bit of Andy Cap. Remember the cartoon Andy Cap? Mm -hmm. And it's called Clown Symbology One. So <laughs> the nose and the nose. <laughs> and it looks like Andy Cap. <laughs> I think that was really the first. And that was probably in the first series where I started really doing the symbols. Yeah. I'm still fascinated by the clowns performing. Because you know, it's frantic. Right, so, you know, I'm not going to get this painting finished today. But, you know, I really wanted to just trick this mouth up. So I'm going to work on the mouth. I really love the fact that I'm treating clown symbology um, in a really positive, happy, fun way. You know, to be honest, I'd love to travel the world doing portraits of every clown that I could meet. It'd be just so cool. So, Frank, tell me about, there's one piece that really does mean a lot to you, and it's called The Spiritual Origins of the Universe. And, yep. uh, tell me what that's about. When I read that piece, I thought this so relates to clowns. I decided that it was the origin of the clown show. At the start, they're putting on their makeup and then it gets more frantic and more frantic and more frantic. And then they have their performance. And that's why I use the gold, gold leaf and gold powder. You know, it leaves that golden experience in your mind. And that's what clowns do to us. You know, they lift us out of a drudgery. And so I just love that. All right, Frank, well, I know that you've got a fair bit to do on that. We're going to let you finish that one off. But we have had an absolutely fantastic day with you. You're an amazingly interesting man. <laughs> Thanks. Fascinating. Def <laughs> definitely the prankster Thanks and the jester of Canberra, without a doubt. But it's, uh, it's been a pleasure being in your studio, and uh, we've had a great day. Thank you. So have I. Well, folks, a great day spent with one of Canberra's <laughs> great celebrities and personalities. <laughs> Frank, that was great. <laughs> He's an abs absolute character. It was a fun day. I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> no, a fantastically iconic man from, uh, from a great city. Uh, love Canberra. It's a beautiful place and some pretty incredible people. But we've had a great time with you. The clowns, they're pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely <laughs> love them. Now, now, if somebody wants to get in touch with you about your work, what's your website? Um, look up, uh, go to dub 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 quantum ideas. Dot com dot au. Quantum ideas. And don't forget the U, because yeah. Qantas has buggered us, buggered it up for us all. Yeah. It, with yeah, Q A N T U M. I can't find you. It's Q U A N T U M I D A S dot com dot au. Ideas. And I'll have a little section there which will be called Frank's Art. Fantastic. That's actually um, Frank's company name. So, uh, but uh, come and say hi anyway. And also you can come to us at colourinyourlife dot com dot au and come in and see us on all our other social networking platforms. I've had a great time, uh, love Canberra. Fantastic time <laughs> being with you as well. It's been a great day. It's been great, really, yeah. So, it's been a great again, day. As we always say, remember, make put, sure you cut, put some put colour, some in, colour in your life. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye now, guys. See Bye. ya. Bye. <laughs>